This video is brought to you by Answerly, a question platform that pays you for adding high quality answers on different questions. The users are rewarded in Answerly tokens, which they can easily convert into dollars or any other cryptocurrency by using one of the exchanges mentioned in the description. The blockchain has been one of the most reliable running jokes in enterprise tech over the last few years. Aging tech vendors and thirsty entrepreneurs alike have struggled to justify their enthusiasm for the technology behind the cryptocurrency explosion and why it makes sense for boring back office applications often to amusing effect. Hello and welcome to our YouTube channel. In today's video, we'll be talking about the blockchain, powered messaging app for the Web3 era, WhatsApp killer. While early efforts to bring blockchain technology to business tech have been comedy gold, enterprise startups are refining those ideas in hopes of moving beyond the cloud. 2017 is the year that'll make or break the case for viable enterprise adoption of blockchain, one of the newest and potentially groundbreaking transformative technologies. IDC wrote in a white paper that year describing IBM's ambitions in this area. If that were true, then this space is truly broken. Very few companies in 2021 are using blockchain applications anywhere near the scale at which they've adopted other recent advancement in enterprise tech like containers or robotic process automation. Sometimes the hype gets ahead of reality, says Ben Golub, CEO of Storage, a startup working on distributed storage technology. I think that's especially true when people conflate enterprise and blockchain with Bitcoin. Before we dive deeply on the blockchain, powered messaging app for the Web3 era, WhatsApp killer, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Blockchain technologies work by creating a shared record of an interaction that none of the parties involved manage or store. In cryptocurrency, powerful energy-guzzling servers around the world compete to solve cryptographic equations that verify the integrity of a transaction between buyers and sellers, with the token awarded to the victors. A permanent public record of that transaction is then added to a block which is a part of a chain of similar transactions. Most experiments with enterprise blockchains won't involve public blockchains like Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. Public blockchains were designed to create a trusted transactional system between two anonymous parties that have no reason to trust each other. Whereas in most enterprise business relationships, you know exactly who you're dealing with. Block apps is seeing demand for companies that want to set up decentralized record-keeping systems for environmental sustainability goals. It also just signed a partnership with AWS where cloud customers can use its Strato blockchain record-keeping system to track agricultural products from seeds in the ground to grocery store shelves, looping in farmers and distributors. How Web 3.0 will change the internet If you're the average internet user, you might not have heard of Web 3.0. You probably don't even know that there has been a 1.0 and 2.0. Still, it'll come soon to change the internet and everything else as you know it. Nowadays, technology is changing every facet of our lives, from communication to information. However, this is just the beginning of even more innovations. See how the upcoming Web 3.0 era will change how we see and perhaps even feel the internet. While the first version of the web was limited to browser and the second limited mobile, Web 3.0 offers a spatial environment right before your own eyes. Wearable devices augmented and virtual realities and the Internet of Things or IoT. And with the advent of distributed computing networks and blockchain technology, it's easier than ever to deal with money over the Internet. The current size of the market is almost 59 billion US dollars, meaning the size is forecast to double in the upcoming years. Online gambling consists of playing casino-style games, poker, and or sports betting via the internet. Due to factors such as the advancement of technology available, like the VR and distributed ledger, higher trust of gamblers paying online, and the increasing digitization of everything, the online gambling market is seeing growth in many regions. After sports betting was legalized by the Supreme Court in the US, online gambling companies are now able to grow their sport betting sectors legally and in compliance with financial regulators thereby further supporting the market's growth. From imbalanced creator economics and pure security to centralized control and disgruntled communities, Web 2.0's flaws have been on full display this past couple of months. First, former Facebook product manager Francis Haugen testified to Congress last month that the social media giant chooses profits over safety. Then, as if on cue, Facebook's centralized services went down worldwide. The outage was so widespread that Facebook couldn't even access the servers itself. And then a disgruntled anonymous hacker released a massive trove of internal data from Twitch, the popular streaming service owned by Amazon. 
Alongside source code and payout information for top graders, the hacker urged improvements, calling the community a disgusting toxic cesspool. In an attempt to foster more disruption and competition in the online video streaming space, it's never been more evident that the old guard has gotten many things wrong despite these platforms' growth, reach, and profitability. The centralized version of Web 2.0, which was all about network effects, massive scale, and winner-takes-all economics, is no longer working for society. It's time to make a change. As Web 3.0 entrepreneurs are building an open infrastructure that fosters a more collaborative, creative, and user-centric internet, it's on us to solve the fundamental flaws of the last generation of technology. To escape toxicity, creators need Web 3.0 tools to step outside the walled gardens and control their destiny via direct relationships with their communities. Web 3.0 also rebalances power dynamics between users and platforms, putting users in control of their data. With interoperability and portability provided by data management platforms like Spruce, Web 3.0 platforms can make it easier for users to vote with their feet and move from one platform to another. As companies like Conflux and Morales make it easier to scale across blockchains and standards, competitors can take swift action whenever an opportunity arises. For instance, when users discover that NFT trading platform OpenSea may have been insider trading based on knowledge of which NFTs would be featured, alternative platforms such as Archeon emerge to rectify some of the perceived grievances of the NFT market. Such rapid reactions to market dynamics just don't exist in the traditional Web 2.0 ecosystem, which relies on scale and closed access to suffocate new entrants. However, Web 3.0 goes well beyond direct user relationships. These platforms are user-owned and community-driven, so the incentives are aligned for the communities to moderate themselves. In the video streaming case, surely no community wants hate raids to force its valued members elsewhere. In the Web 3.0 world, they can act via inbuilt governance and moderation mechanisms. On the mirror blogging platform, users vote on who can write and publish each week. On the Web 3.0 index, listed projects have control over the addition and removal of subsequent projects, ensuring healthy growth of the ecosystem. The Web 3.0 paradigm addresses these misaligned incentives by democratizing access and dissolving silos between creators and fans. Web 3.0 monetization mechanisms for creators like NFTs, digital payments, tokens, and crowdfunding level the playing field in a creator-friendly way. Artists using platforms like Glass.xyz have found that they can monetize their content through NFTs accompanied by an engaging live stream far better than they can by simply selling via a Web 2.0 model. In Web 3.0, users can also own their platforms, often coordinated through tokens. As they benefit directly through the growth of the platforms, they have the incentive to provide critical services like moderation. Without a doubt, it's damaging to have so much of society's social fabric and economic structures reliant on infrastructure controlled by a few private companies. The damage is further compounded when those companies avoid accountability, offering promises to change that seem to fall by the wayside once attention fades. Web 3.0 evolves the internet to take the good from its predecessor and improve upon it through aligning economics and incentives among all users, and thus avoid the negative effects of ad-supported models. And when it comes down to culture and control, decentralized services have a significant advantage over centralized gatekeepers. Web 3.0 proposes an entirely new way to nurture community, empowering users with data portability and interoperability, and recentering incentives that support self-moderating communities. Imagine a new type of internet that not only accurately interprets what you input, but actually understands everything you convey, whether through text, voice, or other media. One where all content you consume is more tailored to you than ever before. And that's it for today's video, guys. As Web 3.0 tokens might be the next hot trade in cryptocurrencies, let's know your thoughts about this video in the comments section below. If you like this video, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe to this channel. To learn more about Answerly and Answerly tokens, check out the links in the description.